Hello everyone, Dr. Cheng here. So today I want to discuss Coulomb's law and uh, how we can add up electric forces as vectors. Uh, it goes back to the question: Why do we have electric phenomena? Why we have electric forces? So. Basically, the fundamental building block of our world is you can see atoms, and the inside atoms is a very, very small, very, very small nucleus in the center, and then you have electrons orbiting around the orbits. In the nucleus, we have protons, which carries positive charge. We have neutrons, which doesn't carry any charge. Even though the nucleus is very, very small, as you can see, the dimension of nucleus, in other words, the length of the nucleus, is only 10 to the negative 15 meter, which is 10 to, which is to the fifth of uh, the size of the atom. So nucleus is very very small compared to the size of the atom, but nucleus contains 99.9% .9 of the atom mass, actually more than that. Now we know we have electron and we have proton. And the electrons carries negative charge. And exactly the amount is negative 1.6 to the 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. And a proton will carry exactly the same amount of charge, but in the it's positive. So electrons carry negative charge. Protons carry positive charge. So which means if in an atom, if you have same number of electrons and the protons, the total net charge of the system is going to be zero. So we'll call this is kind of neutral object. On the other hand, if you have more protons than electrons, then you have positive charge. If you have more electrons than protons, you're going to have negative charge. And of course, this is for one atom. If you have a lot of atoms, then each atom can have more proton or have more electrons. They can add up, and that's how we have particles carrying charge. To summarize, proton and electron have the same magnitude of charge, but different sign. Electron carry negative charge, proton carry positive charge. And if we do an observation, we can, so in the laboratory, we can never observe a fraction of the charge of electron or proton because we cannot break electron or proton into pieces. And the universe, at least there is, for, from all the experiment we observed, the charge is conserved in a closed system. And here so far we haven't observed anything that violate this conservation of charge. Now after we talk about positive charge and negative charge, let's talk about how they interact. If you have two positive charge, they're going to repel each other. The force is going to be in the direction that you join these two charges in a noun, if you have two points, you have a noun, right? Then the force is in the direction of the straight noun, and they repel each other, which means the force going away from each other. And the same thing is true for if you have two negative charges, they repel each other as well. Now, if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, they are going to attract each other. 
So the direction of the force is that you connect them, the force is pointing into each other because it attracts. So this is one of the example I did in the class. We want to find out what's the net force on this charge. So which means you will need to find out the force from this five micro coulomb positive five micro coulomb on this negative four micro coulomb. Now because they carry different sense of charge, so the force from five micro coulomb on this negative four micro coulomb is pointing to the five micro coulomb. So it's acting on the negative four micro coulomb pointing to the five micro coulomb because they attract. See, on the other hand, what will be the force from this negative five micro coulomb on this negative four micro coulomb? Now because they carry both negative signs, so they should repel. So the force from negative five micro coulomb on this negative four micro coulomb should be pointing away from negative 5 coulomb, so it will be in this direction. And if you want to find out what's the net charge on this one, you need to add this force and this force together as a vector. And we're going to do a few more, con more concrete examples later to show you how to do this vector summation. But now let's present Coulomb's law which tells us if you have if you know two charges what's going to be the magnitude of the force between these two charges now if we write it this way which means we're only concerned about the magnitude we don't worry about direction yet and the direction you always need to do this analysis like charges repel and like charges attract, you only need to do this and then add them up as vectors. Coulomb law states that the force between two charges, the magnitude is k, we call it a Coulomb's constant, and which is 9.0 10 to the ninth, and you should put the unit here, it should be Newton. Uh, meter square, coulomb square. This is k. Force proportional to k, proportional to q1 times q2, magnitude, divided by the distance between those two charges, r square. So based on that, let's do one example. So for example, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, all on the x-axis. So we put a Q3 equals negative 6 nanocoulomb at x equals 0. We put a Q1 positive 4 nanocoulomb at 0.2 meter. We put Q2 positive 5 nanocoulomb at negative 0.3 meter. We want to find out what's the net force on charge Q3. So what we need to do, Q3 is negative. Q1 is positive here. Q2 is positive. So Q1 on Q3 is pointing to Q1. Q2 on Q3 is pointing to Q2. They are all attractive force, um, but F1, F2 has different direction, right? Yeah, that's uh, basically how the direction works. And now we need to find out what's the magnitude. So let's find out what's the magnitude of F1. F1 should it be from Coulomb's law K, Q1 times Q3 over, let's call this one R1, R1 squared. 
And if we put in all the numbers, uh, k is 9, 10 to the 9, q1 is 4, 10 to the negative 9, colon. Magnitude of q3, 6, 10 to the negative 9, divided by r1, which is 0 0.2 square. So we find out the magnitude of f1 is 5.39 times 10 to the negative 6 newton and we do the same thing for f2 okay q2 q3 r2 square plugging all the numbers okay q2 which is 5 10 to negative 9 q3 6 10 to the negative 9 and the uh, distance between q2 q3 point 3 square and the magnet is 2.997 10 to the negative 6 so now we find out the magnitude of f1 and f2 and we also know f1 pointing in the positive x direction f2 pointing in the negative x direction so we want to find as a net force on q3 we need to add f1 and f2 together as vectors f1 plus f2 and f1 and f2 only have x component so let's find fx f1x plus f2x f1x is positive and is 5.39 f2 is negative and is 2.997 so we find that the net force is in the positive x direction is magnitude 2.40 negative 6 newton so this is how we add two electric force together. Right now, even though you are they are in the same direction or in x direction, you still need to add them up as vectors and be careful about the direction of the forces. Now we do a little bit more complicated uh, example, which is on your uh, homework, homework program 21, 41, and is also on the recitation note. So it says you have a proton, and then you have two electrons. What are electrons? So how about we call this one electron number one, this one is electron number two. The distance from the electron to the proton are the same. It's all 1.5, 10 to the negative 10 meter. We want to find out the magnitude and the direction of the net force on the proton. We just need to do the same. So electron one and the proton, they carry different charge, right? So they should attract. So the force from electron one and proton is in this direction, let's call it F1. And then you have electron two acting a force on the proton, let's call it F2 in this direction. Uh, let's see, electron, what's the charge of electron? The charge of electron, as we discussed, and charge of proton, 1.6, positive 1.6, 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. So the same, the magnitude of F1 and F2 should be the same. It's just the direction is different, you need to add F1 and F2 up as vectors. Anyway, we need to find the, the magnitude of F1 and F2, right? So F1, F2 should have equal magnitude because the charge is the same, distance is the same. 
um, plugging all the numbers uh, QE Q Q Q proton the distance between them and then 10 to the 9 uh, so QE and the QP are the same 1.6 10 to the negative 19 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 so I write a square here means you have 1.6 10 to the negative 19 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, one from QE, one from QP. And then you have the distance, 1.5, 10 to the negative 10 meter square, unit should be Newton. Find the magnitude of the force, actually is 1.023, 10 to the negative 8 Newton. Now we need to add the force together. Uh, you need to find the x component of F1, x component of F2, y component of F1 apparently is 0, y component of F2. Okay, so F1, x component, F1x is F1 cos in 0 degree which equals f1 because f1 is in the positive x direction f1y is 0 f2 f2x is f2 cos 65 degree And then F two Y is F two sine sixty five degree. And F two cosine sixty five X component is one point four six ten to the negative eight Newton. Y component is nine point two seven. 10 to the negative 9 Newton. We see the x component is f1x plus f2x is add everything together. Let me see. I think f2x is not just number. f2x actually is. Uh, I need to use the eraser somewhere. The x component of F2 actually should be 0.4, So Fx is 1.46 10 to the negative 8. Newton Fy is F1y plus F2y which is or well, F1y is 0 so is 9.27 10 to the negative 9 Newton now which gives us I know what is Fx so this is my F I know what is my fx, what is my fy, so f is square root fx square plus fy square plug in all the numbers find 1.373 and then you can find the angle let's call this one theta for f and you should have theta equals 
change inverse fy over fx plug in the numbers we find is 32.4 degree let's do one more example that I did in the class so you have two uh, particles, each of them 8 gram, equally charged, suspended on Earth. Um, they are in equilibrium. Then we find, want to find the charge on each ball. So we, we know they repel each other. We have an electric force on each of the particle in this direction. So basically our job is to find this number from Newton's first law because they are in equilibrium. We can find this one. Let's see how do we find this one. This is 20 degrees, so this must be 10 degrees, and this is 0 0.3 meter. So this one, so this distance has to be 0 0.3 meter sin 10 meter so this is 0.3 sin 10 as well so we know r is 2 times 0.3 times sin 10 degree meter equals 0 0.104 meter now our job is to solve fe from newton's first law um, so we need to draw free body diagram on, on the particle, right? So let's do it for the particle on the left. So you have gravity, you have tension, you have an electric force, they add up to zero. And Fe is in the negative x direction, Fg in the negative y direction, T has x component and the white component, so we do a composition of T. De we decompose, decompose T to X direction and the Y direction. And in the Y direction, in the X direction, we can build Fe equals T causing 80 degree. In the Y direction, we can have T sin 80 degree which is the y component of t equals to the magnitude of f of g which is if you plug in the equation mg right for the gravitational force in the 8 newton and now we can solve for fe from those two equations is F G times cosine eighty degree over sine eighty degree. Plug in the numbers we find is point zero one four one newton, and this is our electric force. And we also know electric force for the Coulomb's law. So k times q square divided by the distance 0 0.0104 square equals this number. And the k is a constant that we know, 9 times 10 to the 9. R we already solved, so we can solve for Q from the above equation. And if you plug in with the number, you find out it's 1.3 times 10 to the negative 7 coulomb. This is the uh, charge Q we're uh, looking for. So to summarize, so we can use Coulomb's law to find out the magnitude of the electric force. And if you have more than two, more than one electric force, you have two, three or more. If you want to add them together, you have to use um, vector addition as we show in the example.